Hey everyone, it's James here from Just Understanding Data and Send Pioneer. What we're going to be covering today is asynchronous web scraping in Python. To start with, what we're going to need to do is download some packages. We'll be using Beautiful Soup's requests, AIO, HTTP, uh, Pandas, um, potentially, and Nest Asyncio for sure. Now, obviously, you're seeing this and it's being run in a Jupyter Notebook. Um, but specifically, if you're not using a Jupyter Notebook and you're using a Python script, then you don't necessarily need to use Nest Asyncio. Um, so once you've installed all of, the, all of those, what we're going to move on to is how you can scrape a single web page using AIO HTTP. Um, this is the uh, asynchronous request library that's kind of the default or standard for Python. So I'd really recommend checking that out. So if we break it down step by step, the first thing that we're going to be doing is our import. So we'll be doing import AIO HTTP. We'll also be importing Asyncio. Asyncio is a native Python library that is bundled with your Python. Asyncio allows us to create event loops. And with those event loops, we can create a series of tasks that will run asynchronously. So we're using AIO HTTP for the requests and we're using Asyncio to do the event looping um, and the concurrency and the execution of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our first function called async def main. And you'll notice here that when we're using asynchronous code, we include this async um, name the culture at the start of the functions. Um, and then inside of this, we're going to create our asynchronous um, like request. So we do async with, and then we do AIO HTTP uh, dot client session as session. And then with this, we then have basically like a session object that you would have when you would use uh, like regular requests. So you can obviously do something like async with session dot get and we could put like a website here. So for example, I'm going to put like, uh, I'm going to get one here and then do as response. Now at the moment, we, although we're doing a get request to this specific Python website, we still haven't actually like caught the information. So if I was to just do like uh, response dot txt like this, um, and then if I was to print this, you'll see that this doesn't actually return anything, right? Now, if I actually call the function like this, we have a coroutine object, right? So we're not, so for one thing, even if this function was to work, we wouldn't be able to get the text um, because we're not specifically awaiting for it. And then the second thing is that we've got this coroutine, um, but to actually run a coroutine, what you do is do you do asyncio run, and then you put your function in there. Um, and you'll see I'm getting an error because I actually need um, Nest Asyncio because um, I'm using a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, but if you weren't using a Jupyter Notebook, you wouldn't need that. So if I re now rerun this, um, you'll see uh, I have a coroutine object of text. So this print response text wasn't actually saved. Um, so the way that we can save this is we do something where we await the variable uh, or the response or the function. So when I do this, and then if I was to print text test uh, I'm gonna say text like this now you'll now see that we're actually getting the response text so the really important thing is that when you're using this kind of asynchronous nature is that you need to use async at the start of your functions and you also need to use await um, when you're waiting for things inside of an event loop inside of a coroutine um, so but the other thing is if you were to put something here that doesn't necessarily need um, you know, like doesn't need to wait for anything, then like, you know, obviously like the print test, we can see that that's come through fine. Um, but obviously if you were gonna do other things with the data you got from text, then you would obviously need to do something like this where you have your first await, you get the text at that point, and then you have like some like uh, cleaned data, and then you would do like await, like function, like name, and then you would put the text in here. And then what would happen is once you do a get request, you'll first be awaiting to receive the text of the response, the HTML code, which will then assign to the variable of text. After that, you then have another function, which then takes after the having like successfully awaited for text, you then have this function that operates on the data again and will give you some clean data. So awaiting allows you to chain um, conditions like of variables 
having succeeded or functions having succeeded in your event loop. So that's a really important concept. And then at the final part of this, we've got asyncio.run and then just basically um, wrapping the coroutine. And what happens under the hood is asyncio creates an event loop uh, which will execute all of your code and then it will destroy this event loop afterwards. Now, if you want to scrape multiple web pages, you can use this kind of logic where you go tasks, you build a list of tasks, and then you would say for URL in URLs, what you want to do is basically get your list and append a function, right? It could be any name. And you attach the session, right? The session being the AIO HTTP session and the URL being the URL you'd want to scrape. And then what you'll end up with is essentially coroutines like this. And there'll be basically functions that similar to this main, it will be a coroutine object that hasn't been actioned, right? So we have these coroutine objects inside here. So let's have a look at that and see what it would look like inside of a class. So we've got our fetch function here and we've got some generics like um, global variables that we're using. So we're passing in a list of URLs, assigning that to self.urls. We've got an empty list called self.alldata and an empty dictionary called self.masterdict. And then as soon as the class is in, um, has been initialized, then we run this main function, right? asyncio.run self.main, which is this function here. Now we have a specific function called fetch. Async def fetch is going to take in a session object, which will be the AIO HTTP client session. And then we also have a URL. Now with this, we're just getting the text and we're getting the URL, which will be returned as a tuple object. Also notice that we're printing the exceptions. Now the important line here is, remember earlier on, I said we created a list of coroutines using this kind of structure. When we have that list in task, what we can use, we can use asyncio.gather and then put an asterisk and tasks, and it will basically try and action all of those individual coroutine tasks inside of an event loop after asyncio.run is executed. And then this HTMLs will be a list of coroutine results. So if we scroll down to here, we're, we're essentially creating a list of tasks, and then we're saying gather up all the tasks, and as they complete, assign them dynamically to this list called HTMLs. And then from there, we're then taking the HTMLs data and adding it to a global list. Finally, what we're doing is we're saying for every HTML in the HTMLs, so for every item in the list, if the item is not none, then assign the URL to the first parenthesis, the first index, which is the, actually the second index because it's zero and one. And then self.maskedict is the URL with the first index, index equals zero. So again, you can see here, index URL one would be the URL name, and the text here would be index position zero. So we can now try this. So if I take in two URLs, we initialize the class URLs equals URLs, and then we can see, okay, cool. So we were able to scrape some data. So let's have a look at this. So we go scraper, and then let's have a look at the global dictionary, which is called masterdict. Cool. So you can see we're able to scrape some data. Now, it's also possible for us to add in HTML parsing as an additional logic step. So rather than just getting the page and putting it into a Python dictionary, we could also scrape out elements of the page. You'll see here that we've added a specific function called async def extract title tag. We're passing in a parameter of text and we're trying to get the text and making a beautiful soup object that takes in the HTML and passes it and returns the title tag of the web page and prints an exception if we couldn't get anything. Notice also how we've changed the fetch function. So rather than just extracting the text, we've got two await commands. So first we await for the text, and then after the text is fully comes, we're then able to use the text in further functions. So you can see here, we're now also applying an await function here to this self.extractTitle tag, 
we're passing in the text that we previously had to wait for, and we're, we're getting the title tag from return soup.title. And then we're returning not only the text and the URL this time, but we're also returning the title tag, which means if we go and see in our main function, we're also now able to extract the title tag on index position three, which we can see is index position zero, one, uh, zero, one, and two, or one, two, three in position terms. Cool. So let's now run that. And you can now see we're able to extract some form of a title tag, even though there's a 520 web server is returning an error. This is probably Cloudflare protecting my title tags. Um, but yeah, you can see here there's a specific object. And if we were to do a type on this, we can see it's a beautiful soup for element tag. So hopefully this gives you a really good introduction into how you can get started with asynchronous web scraping in Python. Um, I'd really encourage you to have a play around, change the fetch function, maybe extract a different element rather than the title tag, and just have a look at these scrapers and realize that there's a couple of things going on with these. The first thing is that we're creating a function that we are gonna be using in our task list. We have a main function here. We create a client session with AIO HTTP. We also have the tasks that get added to a list as coroutine objects. Finally, we use asyncio.gather to create a list of the return results. The only other thing that's going on apart from that is wrapping it all up and doing asyncio.run self.main. Cool. All right, well, thanks a lot for this. And if you enjoyed this, please feel free to give it a like and a subscribe.